Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zed Bell to honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Philosopher William Cowper said these words, and they really bear your attention. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Amen. Let's have a great day for a Thursday. Good morning. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, be the patriot to call in this morning. And a good, good morning to you out there and your families. Be safe. Have a great, great day. Zebeth Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell. And, of course, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale going on right now. Woo! Save a lot of money. Stop in and see them today. And don't forget some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 and Burley helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's uh, hear from our patriots that are going to give us our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. My friend. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, my good friend, and I need you to call back a little bit later because I've got a subject matter I want you to discuss. Thank you so much for your call. All right, buddy. Hey, listen, let's go right to the weather. I don't know what the weather is going to be for today, tomorrow, and for the weekend, but I don't want any more wind. Holy moly. i tell you a little story about that wind in a few minutes, but right now let's find out about the weather. K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, sponsoring our weather. They're right there on the Burley Paul Highway. You can't miss them, and they've got all the equipment and the tools for you to use for your sports. Spring projects. Now, I'm telling you that uh, if you're not sure what to use or what you need or how to get the job done, whatever, call. Roger and the crew are always so helpful at 678-3122. I'll repeat that, 678-3122, K&R Rental. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Maybe a little bit of rain for today and slightly breezy. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Mostly cloudy skies is what we're looking at. We do have a slight chance of rain showers this afternoon and expecting a high of 52 winds out of the west at about 15 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, expecting a low of 34. Tomorrow, a slight chance of rain and or snow showers in the morning. That's going to give way to rain by the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies, still breezy. Expecting a high of 52 by Friday night. Partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Hopefully for Saturday we're going to see a little bit of sunshine with a high of 57. By Sunday, mostly cloudy skies. Chance of rain showers and a high of 56. <laughs> That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebra. Oh my goodness, come on! Please, enough with the rain and the wind and let's please have some better forecasts. Anyhow, brought to you by our friends at k Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, on the Burley Paul Highway. Again, call Roger and the crew for any questions at 678-3122. Merv May, come on in here. Let's sell some cattle. All right. 
I he gets at his deer calves there. Here you go, thirty one woman and a half, thirty one and a half, and thirty two, two and a half, three and a half. That's the chant of the world's best dog gone to auctioneer. I'll tell you what, Merv May's got a chant right there. I'll guarantee it at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, eleven hundred Occidental Avenue in Burley, and the number to call for cattle consignments and sale information six seven eight nine four one one. The sale that works for you. Sale time this morning at ten thirty. Here's a partial look at the run going through. Ted Tracy of Elmo's bringing down forty five head of rip and good seven hundred pound steers. Brandon, I want to say, oh boy, I better check this name here just a little bit. Uh, Brandon, I'm not sure what it is up at Albion. I've got to check that name. Bringing down 45 to 50 head of calves. Now, the reason I don't know what the last name is for sure is because my handwriting, when I'm in a hurry... Oh, it's a disaster. Brandon, if you're listening, I know you're bringing in some ripping good calves. 45 to 50, 50 head coming in. Doug Phillips over to Pingree is bringing down 45 to 50 head of 700-pound Holstein steers. And some more real good cattle from the Bedke Wine Cup Ranch. 80 head of 350 to 500-pound calves, along with butcher cows coming in from Antelope Hills Dairy, Acme Dairy, Funk Dairy. And like I said, sale time this morning at 1030 at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Merv, sell those steers. All right. He gets at his steer calves there. Here to get all her 31, one and a half, 31, one and a half, 32, two and a half, three and a half, 134, four and a half, and five and a half, five and a half, 135, 50, 135 and a half, selling dollar 35. Zeb Bell gets bottom again. I just realized what my penmanship was lacking, and I forgot to finish the name. Brandon Brackenberry. Yeah. Hey. I got it. Brandon, I'm sorry. I didn't finish the name. Old Merv and I, when we get on the phone and he's giving me the run, I mean it's broop, 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 and I better write fast. Brandon Brackenberry up at Albion, 45 to 50, had a real good calves coming into the sick. There, I got it all figured out. And that's the sale that works for you, Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Caller. <laughs> I'll be right with you, caller. Stand by. Don't forget our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric. I just sometimes, my penmanship, no, not very good. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call 678-0459. They're open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday for all. Underline that word. All your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. They've been in business for over six decades. They're not the new kids on the block. As a matter of fact, they're what everybody else looks up to. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday. You stop in and see them today. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. The Burley Senior Center on South Overland is having Subway sandwiches. Potato salad, baked beans, and cookies for dessert. <laughs> Joe, Joe, what kind of cookies? Yummy cookies. That's my boy. There you go. Homemade. Okay. Uh, and what are they? Sugar cookies, chocolate chip? What are they? Well, we're. We'll say chocolate chip. That's my favorite. Okay. Well, if they're not, and they happen to be sugar cookies, you better bring me one. Now, I believe on April 22nd they're having uh, where they draw a sample of your blood to see if you got cancer. So call over there at 208-878-8646 and talk to Bob, and he'll give you the details on getting signed up for that. All right, Joe. God bless you for your call, and you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, yummy right. man. Appreciate Thank it. You. The same. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, great guy right there. Hey, I want to remind you, the Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale is this weekend. Yeah, buddy. Up in Salmon at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds, 47th Annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale. And it actually, all the activity starts today. Yes, it does. Get on up there. They're going to have a great big welcome social hour, wolf hauling contest. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. Mule Sale Calcutta. Tomorrow, the Mule Sale, Mule Race all kinds of things. Saturday, the big horse sale. Woo! It's a happening. It's a happening up at the 47th Annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds in Salmon. For more information, he's right by the phone right now. Fred Snook, 756-2125.
All right. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. A couple of quick things. I'm going to keep hammering on this. I had a couple of calls yesterday, and I'm not going to weaken. Again, still, no pastors, ministers, or church leaders in this area have called to try to get on my program and discuss many of the social ills and social problems that we're not immune to in this area. And as a matter of fact, we're going to be probably opening up more avenues of uh, having more of these social ills and problems. And I think it's absolutely a necessity that we get out and talk about them, and there's nobody that I think is more appropriate uh, than would be the ministers and pastors from the pulpits that lead their churches. And we have put this plea out so many times, so many times, and yet crickets nothing one pastor responded one pastor from twin falls reverend paul thompson has been on the air with me twice talking about these social ills at least a certain portion of them nobody else has responded so i'm going to ask you to go to your churches this weekend and and ask your pastor why won't you call and try to get on and the airtime the publicity for you your church your congregation but no so far crickets and by the way they can call me after the program's over at 312-2976 uh give me a call 436-2244-1866-927-4587 denny's restaurant now we are going to be over there next thursday the 18th for our lunch bunch don't forget put that on your calendar love to have you there 611 north overland and burley oh the breakfast and lunch and the dinner and the dessert choices are phenomenal absolutely delicious and the people really make the business the restaurant because they're so service oriented with a smile on their face and really helpful uh it's thomas and the rest of his crew great denny's restaurant 611 north overland and burley America's Diner. And we will be over there next Thursday, the 18th, for Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Don't you forget it. By the way, too, before we get into our next subject, and boy, this one's got my hair on the back of my neck standing up. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And uh, I just can't brag enough, and I mean this, on the excellent staff, the caring, the knowledge, and the will to help you get back to being you. Whether you're recouping from an accident, a surgery, or all your aches and pains, whatever, they can and they will help you. So please give them a call at 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. You give them a call today. This story um, came across the wire, as a matter of fact, about an hour and a half ago. And I think it's a story that absolutely each and every one of us should sit back and just absolutely be mad and appalled and questioning the sanity and the integrity and the moral value of our United States of America. I have had this story on before, parts of it, and every House Democrat, now listen carefully to what I'm telling you, Every House Democrat but one, but one, has co-sponsored a bill requiring schools, high schools, to allow male athletes who identify as transgender girls to compete on female sports teams. This is so sick and so despicable and so perverted. The Democrats' Equality Act would amend the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to make sexual orientation and gender identity protected characteristics under federal anti-discrimination law. Among other things, the bill would force, 
There's a word that just absolutely makes me get furious. The bill would force public schools to expand female athletic teams to include biological males who identify as transgender girls. Every woman, every high school and collegiate athlete, female, should absolutely be outraged this morning to the point of protests, to the point of not putting their uniforms on and competing in their respective sports and walking off the floor or the court. This is an outrage, and it absolutely flies in the face of anything that is decent and anything that is moral. I'm telling you folks that the transgender issue in this country that we talked about with Reverend Paul Thompson, the only minister that had the nerve and the guts to come on this program and talk about this issue. This is going to be an issue that will kill girls' athletics. Mark my words, that's going to happen. It absolutely is flying in the face of many, many of the facts that have come across. I'll give you just a couple of them. We carried the story about in Connecticut where a couple of transgender boys have literally dominated the winning of the track titles in that state for high school track. And the girls are very demoralized and don't even want to compete anymore. And then also there was another story about basketball players uh, dressing up as girls, transgender. It's absolutely perverted garbage. And competing and winning and having a great advantage over the girls. Now, as parents here, you better make sure that this kind of garbage doesn't happen here. But you know, to force, then I'm going to go back and use that word again. This bill sponsored by all the Democrats would force public schools to expand female athletic teams to include biological males who identify as transgender girls. Not only the scholarships, not only the logistics of locker rooms and uh, the team aspect and the camaraderie and uh, the the absolute anti-morality of this, but it's going to absolutely desecrate and disintegrate, I think, anything with girls' athletics. Title IX was put together for more protection and more money for equality with girls' sports versus boys' sports. I cannot support anything like this, and I'm going to advocate that we fight it. I'm going to advocate that parents stand up and say, my child, my girl, will not compete under these circumstances, even if it means that that respective sport might go down in dust. We've got to fight back somehow. And by letting the absolute... Heinous Democrats, who I despise, I wanted to use a lot stronger words and I can't, to come up with this, every House Democrat but one co-sponsored this bill. And what really makes me fear is there were even two, two Republicans, to which after this program, I'm going to find out how to get a hold of them, emails, whatever, and let them know how damned... I think they should be. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. you got to speak out, folks. You've got to speak out. This filthy, absolutely heinous act has got to be stopped. Don't forget Rain for Rent, and they're located at 134 South, 600 West of Paul. The Reinke Diamond Dealer, and like I stated the other day, Jake uh, sent some information over here, that they have the telemetry annex boxes for any pivot. That You know, you can sit there, you could be at the coffee shop, you could be at the sale yard, you could be at your restaurant, and you can run that whole pivot right through your phone. Man, I'll tell you, this technology is absolutely amazing. Find out more about how they can better serve you. They've got a dedicated 
dedicated sales and service staff that really know all about irrigation. So please contact the best serving you at 438-5065 or stop in at 134 South 600 West of Paul. And that's Rain for Rant. Jake, good morning to you. Glad to have you on the program. Thank you much. Also, our thanks go out to Mad River Laser. I love that business. They have been so helpful to me over the years with many, many of the projects I've had for, like, sweatshirts and T-shirts and caps and everything. Nicole and the staff over at Mad River Laser, and they're so easy to find, too. They're right smack dab on the square in Rupert, right next to the um, youth ranch, 502 East Street in Rupert. And you stop over and see them today. They've gone through a great big homespun upgrade and they're offering more items that say made in the USA and they're proud of it too. And by the way, if you need anything made up caps or t-shirts or any kind of screen printing or whatever the case might be and you mention my name Zeb Bell, they will give you uh, savings of up to 50 bucks. So please stop in today and see the best, work with the best at Mad River Laser on the square in Rupert right next to the youth ranch. I am surprised that you as parents are not calling. I am surprised that folks are not upset and irate over this. House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler, that little bitty, repulsive man from New York, made the arguments about this uh, way back uh, a couple of weeks ago and said, oh, yeah, the Democrats, they got to sign on to this. Mm -hmm. Every Democrat should get uh, on this Democrats' Equality Act. What is equal? What is equal when you denigrate girls' athletics? How do you call that equal? Ah. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. I suppose that uh, this is just a real wonderful out for these boys who call themselves transgender. If they can't make it on an all-male team, they can come over and dominate a female team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've summed it up. You've summed it up. There you go. Then I suppose this transgender girls into the locker rooms of the girls' team. You know, I'm not a bit surprised if there's going to be lawsuits filed for with the Equality Act that they have to accept him. I mean, it, I know it sounds even more perverted, but, Linda, you know as well as I do. They've got the camel's nose is under the tent now, and pretty quick the whole camel's going to be in the tent and everybody else is outside. This thing is so sick and so repulsive. And let's just call a spade a spade. God made two genders, male and female, and all this other trans garbage is is nothing more than that word. Garbage. Yeah. It is. If they're going to play on a team and they can't play on the boys' team, let the transgenders play the transgenders. See what they get with that. Yeah, you know, that's just exactly a point that I think should be made, is that if they've got the numbers and they've got the want to play, start their own little league. But don't, don't, in any way, shape, or fathom, try to change, alter, and diminish the value of girls' sports, and that's what's going to happen. And I suppose if you don't like them, you'll be guilty of a hate crime. Oh, I get accused of that other day, every day. And if i got to be really honest, and you strap on the armband on the lie detector test, I'm, and they ask me, are you prejudiced? You know what I'm going to have to say? You're doggone right I am, because I believe in two genders, male and female, and I believe the girls should have every opportunity to excel in their sport without the intrusion and the invasion of transgender males. Yeah, because it's not equal for the girls. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. So it just saddens me that, and angers me that we have all these things in our country that to me are just tearing it down. It's tearing it apart, and once this happens, honestly, how is it going to get rebuilt? All right, Linda, thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. 
Oh, thank you. You know, I, I just honestly, uh, I, I guess I'm so blessed that uh, I'm a grandfather now, and my kids are growing up, but my goodness, I mean, when Toby was in high school and also in college, and to think that her teams would have been subjected and, and uh, possibly exposed to this kind of idiocy, and that's what it is, idiocy. Caller, I'll be right with you, please. Don't go away. I want to remind you this Saturday, oh, there's going to be a ripping good time over at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds because they're going to have that spring community sale starting at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Farm equipment, livestock equipment, all kinds of equipment, guns, you name it, it's all there at the Great Big Spring Community Sale. Managed by the Rocky Auction Company, they are so good. And they're still taking consignments, too. Call Ron Rocky at 431 618 Seven four three one six one eight seven. Big sale Saturday, ten a.m. Spring community sale at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. You be there. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Yeah, there's uh, there's only two genders. God doesn't make a mistake. That's right. And anybody that thinks God makes a mistake and tries to change it, I would not want to be in their shoes when they meet the Holy Maker. Well, see, this is the thing that I think we're kind of skirting around here a little bit, but I'm going to come right out and say it. These people that are advocates of this, including all but one Democrat, how can they believe in God? How can they believe in the Bible? How can they believe in what the Bible says when they come up with idiotic, absolutely terrible laws like this? I, My personal opinion is they don't. They believe in a different God, which is not the true God. They believe in their self, that they are smarter than God, so that they can do this. It, it's just a way to tear this country apart, to separate people, and that's how you conquer. You separate, divide, and conquer. How can any, you know, this is the part that really bugs me. How can any father... How could any father and or mother serving in the House of Representatives pass legislation this heinous, this dirty, this filthy, when they may have teenage daughters that are competing in high school and or in college? How can they do that to their own daughters? Exactly. And how can the parents of these boys, which is what they are, they're a boy, they're a male, how can they face their community and their friends knowing that their son is acting like just saying he's a girl and competing in sports and dominating? Yeah. How can they yeah. look themselves in the mirror? Let me, let me throw this at you. One of the top basketball teams in the nation for years and years has been the girls' team from the University of Connecticut. They've been outstanding. You know that. Now, all of a sudden, they have set records with uh, rebounding records, scoring records, winning, uh, winning records, uh, tournament records, and national championship records. Now, with this law... How are you going to rewrite the record books if they, I'm not saying they are, but I'm just saying if they end up with a bunch of transgender boys on the team? Look what that does to absolutely besmirch and belittle the records of college and high school sports. Exactly. That's exactly it. I mean, if you get the nail on the head there. It, you can't rewrite the records on what a female athlete has done when a male athlete who thinks he's a female goes and beats that record that cannot be that it can't stand our society is becoming so perverted and so dumbed down. I can't imagine anyone in this country listening to the garbage of transgenderism when they sit there and they say, like in New York State, well, there's over 47 or 49 fluid genders. Fluid genders? Would you please explain to me how in the world you get to that point of total incompetency? You forget to take your medication that day. Oh, my gosh. Because I read the other day, and it it was quite humorous on this subject here. It said, remember the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus? Yeah. But all other genders are from the planet Uranus? (laughs) Yeah. 
Uh, you know, Doug, we can laugh, but it's not funny. It isn't. This situation just shows how deeply uh, rooted in sin and Satanism our country is getting. Now, I know that there's groups of the transgenders around the state of Idaho, and I know they absolutely hate me, which is fine. But I have a right to speak out. I have a right to my faith. I have a right to my beliefs, if you will, and I'm not going to weaken. I think they have been a perverted part of what's wrong with this country. Well, I, we have our rights, like you just stated. But they have their right to be totally insane when they think they're another gender or when they think they're a cat or a kangaroo or whatever they want to think they are. That is a mental disorder, unfortunately. You read it in the Bible, it, it's not right. Well, it, but wait a minute. They can do, and they can dress, and they can think as they wish. But, hold on a second. They have the right to do with their life as they want to do. But, by getting involved like they are and trying to upturn or overturn girls' athletic programs by invading the sports programs and being a part of it and demanding they be a part of girls' teams. That's inflicting their their thoughts and what the, how they want to live onto other people, and that's wrong. And that's, I agree with you. That's like the tail wagging the dog. Where their rights end, where my nose begins. Absolutely. This is really serious, and I just hope the audience out there realizes that when you have every House Democrat, I want to repeat this again so you don't forget it, every House Democrat but one, I mean, we're talking hundreds, co-sponsored a bill requiring schools, high schools and colleges, to allow male athletes who identify as transgender girls to compete on female sports teams. Think about that, mull it over, chew it, and think how devastating it is. It is devastating. And if anybody wants to read or learn more about the Democrats and the Bible and what the Bible said about them, look up Phil Robinson. He has a YouTube deal. And he goes through why you should not vote Democrat if you're a Christian. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, he verse and quotes from the Bible telling it like it is. Okay, well, whoa, 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 stop just for a minute. Hmm, here we go. We're talking about social ills. We're talking about something that churches should be talking about uh, with sermons from the pulpit. Oh, once again, I call on the ministers, the pastors, but all I hear is crickets. Yeah, and that's sad. That's really sad. If if they're they're not much of a leader, if they worry more about their congregation being right with the congregation rather than being right with God. Yeah, you summed it up, Doug. Thank you for your call this morning. Real quick about the seniors, I got to run. Okay, everybody, let's do what we can for our seniors. Let's go eat lunch there one day. I challenge you, five six bucks for a fantastic lunch, lots of knowledge, and yummy desserts. There you go. All right. You and Joe, there you go. <laughs> yummy desserts, you're right on. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I've always said that I have the bravest part of a radio audience here, and they will speak out, so your calls are welcome, 436-2244. Don't forget Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union. Hello, Dr. Bill. They have been uh, voted Minicash's best veterinary hospital a number of times, and they're waiting to serve you, whether you you've got problems with your house pets or your dairy cattle horses whatever the case might be mixed animal practice large and small they can make sure they take care of them all and keep them healthy absolutely please call if you have any problems 6781177 that number again 6781177 ark animal hospital in hayburn where they have the warm hearts for the cold noses really good people
I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Barry Equipment and Rental. We're going to be talking to them a little bit later on this morning. A gentleman by the name of Corey Chandler is going to be on our program, and we're going to be talking about the Doosan loaders. We're going to be talking about all the lifting, digging, pushing, carrying equipment that they have, the loaders, excavators, everything at Barry Equipment and Rental. Don't forget they have three locations serving you for the best of equipment rentals and retail equipment sales, 159 West Highway. Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and the Napa location. They are good. Barry, equipment and rental. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I just have a comment. Um, I just love it when you do the advertisement for Arca and the Mole Hospital, and, uh, and you introduce the veterinarian there, and his name is Dr. Bill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Believe me, when you come to Dr. Bill, you will get a bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but Dr. Bill is really a sharp guy. Come on now, you know, give him, they do a great job. And I just adore him, and uh, every time I see him, I said, I said, do you know that um, Zeb introduces you on his show as Dr. Bill, and anyway... Um, you're advertising for yourself twice because you're going to give somebody a bill when they come. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chris, real fast, what do you think about the subject matter that we're talking about this morning? Oh, my gosh. There is, well, you can tell, the devil is alive and well, and he is really after the American people. And if we give in, if we give in, our, our country is doomed because um, we have led the world in being higher-minded. And why are we getting into the, into the garbage? This is just sad that Americans, I don't know, what's going on with them? They are so privileged that they should be so grateful. Every woman, every woman, and I mean this, you... And every woman in this country, every teenage girl, every college female athlete should be outraged and they should be on the phone. They should be writing letters. They should absolutely be in condemnation of this absolutely silly, stupid, perverted bill the Democrats are pushing through. Well, I, um, I certainly... Uh, yes, we all need to get on the phone to our our uh, representatives because they've got to stand tough and they've got to stay together. We cannot let this happen again and again and again in our country. It's just turning us into turmoil. Chris, what you're always sharp on politics and everything, but in very short answer to this, because I got to give a weather forecast. What in the world could be considered equality? when they're going to allow transgender males to be a part of a girls' team. How is that making it equal? It's destroying the equality for girls. Well, yeah. Um, it's kind of like we hate ourselves, and we don't believe in that God that made us like we are, and so now we can strike the last blow and get on the girls' Um, on the women's teams, and then we can just mow them down. Yeah. That's, that's what they do. They hate their gender, and they are not very excited about the other one. So um, I think they need to go and have a long uh, visit with some, some smart uh, psychiatrist. Well, that's the whole thing. Smart yeah. I, I think that's the whole problem with all of our House, our Senate, government in general, and the way that we operate today. We all need to sit down on a psychiatrist's couch and really try to figure out why in the world we're going nuts. And this is absolutely going nuts. What it is, in simple terms, it's an invasion. A male invasion into female spaces that should be left alone only for girls and women. Mm -hmm. I got to run. Uh, um, this is just against. This is just against everything that is right. It's against anything that is. It's against anything that's normal. And Chris, God bless you for your call. Thank you. I got to get the weather on. Thanks.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I just imagine some of the emails and some of the uh, unknown name or number callers I'm going to get. And That's fine. Somebody's got to stand up, and I think we all should stand up. Uh, there's some great, fantastic girls, athletes, and teams. I don't want to see them destroyed. Don't forget, right now, our weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and they're right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room in Rupert. Oh, my goodness sakes, don't forget. The number to call for a hearing screening to really help you. They, they can tell you whether your diminishment in hearing is maybe caused by high blood pressure or some sort of a disease or whatever the case might be. Please don't let it go. Call them today at 312 957 Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, serving you. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Maybe a little bit of rain for today and slightly breezy. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Mostly cloudy skies is what we're looking at. We do have a slight chance of rain showers this afternoon and expecting a high of 52 winds out of the west at about 15 miles an hour, gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, expecting a low of 34. Tomorrow, a slight chance of rain and or snow showers in the morning. That's going to give way to rain by the afternoon, mostly cloudy skies. Still breezy, expecting a high of 52 by Friday night, partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Hopefully for Saturday, we're going to see a little bit of sunshine with a high of 57. By Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, chance of rain showers and a high of 56. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. You know, really, we could just take that tape this morning, Wheels of Gina, and we could just play it over and over and over. My goodness, I'd like to hear sunny skies in 70. Caller, I'll be right with you. Don't forget, our weather brought to you this hour by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and they are the best at what they do, serving you and your hearing health. Call them at 312-0957. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, they're backing up. Look out, wheels. They're going to get you. Uh, calls are, Don't just call and hang up, please. There you go. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. i just been listening and listening and listening. And, you know, the Democrats, if they would just read the Bible, just open it up and read some of the things that have taken place a long, long time ago, and what did the Lord do with these people? Yep. You know, it was, they were wiped off the face of the earth, and now it's eventually creeping back into us. You know, let me ask you something. You're a God-fearing man. I know that. You and Nancy are really good examples of being God-fearing people. I don't want to bring any denomination into it. I'm not going to. But I'm going to say this. How can anybody that is a God-fearing person and knows that the Bible is God's word and try to live by that word, how can we accept this filth? How can we accept this perverseness in our society? Why aren't we fighting back a lot more than what we are? Yeah. Another thing. No, 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 no. Answer that question. How come? I can't answer that. <laughs> well, are you involved? Are you and Nancy involved? Are you telling other people to get involved? I mean, why aren't we getting involved? You can't just shift the blame to somebody else, Keith. We all should be crying out in outrage over this. We are in our own way. But we're not making a lot of waves, and probably that's what we should do. Absolutely. There is no probably about it. It's absolutely. But I I listened intensely yesterday, every word that was spoken, and I think you're right. I don't have the answer, and that's why I never call. The answer is involvement, and and I'm not picking at you by any means at all. I'm just using you as kind of the focal point right here. The answer is involvement. 
The answer is people standing up and saying, whether it's within their churches or at their communities or at their high schools or whatever, hey, this kind of garbage cannot and will not be tolerated, and we've got to put things on the right moral track. And people not saying anything, pastors not saying anything, is leading to the demise and increasing the problem. I agree with you there. And... But me, as an individual, what should I do? Speak out. If you get a chance to speak to church leaders, speak out. If you get a chance to talk to school leaders, speak out. If you get a chance to talk to politicians, speak out. Let them know in no uncertain terms that two and two is four, and it's not going to be slanted or jaded by making two and two seventeen. I mean, come on. We've got to speak out and let our voices be heard. Well, how many choices, I mean... How many churches allow this per, per, perversy or whatever, how you pronounce it, allow in their congregation? Well, it, it's not that. Okay, wait a minute. You're bringing up a really good point. I don't know, and I will never say, as to what's going on with a perverted attitude or acceptance of perverted attitudes within the churches. But there again. If the ministers are doing their job and the church leaders are doing their job preaching the Bible, whether it's Romans one twenty seven or whatever the Bible verse and whatever the Bible says, then you're going to help eliminate the problem. Well, I agree with you there once again. All right, Keith, I just, I, I certainly hope I didn't come on as picking on you because you're such a dear friend, but I think we all have to get more involved and speak out loudly. I agree there, too. <laughs> All right, my friend. Hey, listen, next Thursday's Lunch Bunch, we'll plan on seeing you there. Bring your lovely wife, and uh, we'll welcome you back. Thank you very much. i got to run. We'll Thank be you. There, be square. There you Bye. go, buddy. Thank you. Uh, i got time for another call after I do this. Give me a jingle, 43622. Four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. The Bennett Boys caller. I'll be right there. The Bennett Boys Auction Service bringing you the Big Bolick Auction. It's going to be at ten o'clock this Saturday morning, April thirteenth, located at seven fifteen East one seventy North of Jerome. From the blinking light on Highway ninety three, go north two miles and then east on Red Bridge Road five miles. And this is a super nice clean farm auction. Great tractors and combines, farm equipment. Equipment, ATVs, trailers, irrigation items, everything at the Bolick Auction this Saturday at 10 o'clock, uh, 715 East, 170 North of Jerome. Don't miss it. Managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. My buddy Joe and the rest of the crew, the Bennett Boys. No sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, they sell them all. Caller, I got two minutes. Go ahead. Well, perversion is not of God. And it should never be in a, in a allowed in any kind of a church that considers itself to be a Christian church. There is no gray. There never has been gray. And when we play the game trying to appeal to people thinking that we're going to be cool or up to date or something, in the end, everybody loses. The what? pastor, the flock. It's a disaster. You know, Randy, what you just said, Randy, let me jump in there because you made an excellent point that needs to be elaborated on. And and I think you'll agree with me. I'm not saying here or wherever, but I'm just saying it happens in general that maybe some of the church board members have a child or a daughter or a son that leans towards these radical lifestyles, which they are. And so they go to the pastor and they say, I don't think you should preach about this. You might be stepping on my toes. And the pastor backs up. Instead of doing his job, he weakens and doesn't do or say anything, and I think that's what you were alluding to. Well, sins of commission or sins of omission are still sins. See, we can't play that game. We, we can't act like it's going to be all right, and then when everything falls apart, as a father, you know, we try to cater to the situation because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah. Well, in the end, you know, we all will die, will suffer. Yep. The, the, the truth will come out. There is, there is no hiding it. That's right. Churchill said that you can... 
do everything you want to the truth, but at the end of the day, it's still the truth. You got it. Randy, I, I wish that you always call me so late, and I want to spend more time with your opinions. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you a little alarm clock, and I'm going to send it to you so that it's set at 20 minutes to the hour so i got more time to visit with you. <laughs> so thank you very much for your call. I'm so busy because we elected Donald J. Trump. Thank God. <laughs> I am so grateful. <laughs> that was well said. Thank you very much, Randy. Appreciate it. God bless you, man. Bye. Hey, don't forget the big spring tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Holy moly, have they got a lot of tires on sale that are going to work just right for your cars, pickups, and SUVs, and you can save money. Be sure and stop in and see them today. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy. Randy on Overland in Burley. The best serving you with a big spring tire sale and the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Caller, I've got exactly one minute. Go. Okay. Uh, Zeph, just real quick, I don't know if you ever did that segment on this bond election for these schools. Is this the right time to even bring that up? No, it is not, but I'll tell you this, because you were so gracious in giving me a lot of information. We're going to try to get that done. If not next week, I've had trouble getting all the parties together on this. We are working on it, and I promise it'll be happening on my program. I just can't give you a definitive day just yet. Great. Okay. All right. That's all I wanted to do. Just kind of bring that up again, and and uh, they got to put a cap on this on these taxes. You're right. I agree. Listen, I hate to be rude to you, but as you can see on your wristwatch, I got to run to the news. I'll be back in about seven minutes. Zeb at the ranch on this Thursday morning. We'll be back in seven. Oh. It just gets worse all the time. <laughs> you just sometimes you listen to the news and you go, "What in the world is this world coming to?" Holy moly! Zeb at the ranch, and of course, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale going on right now. And I urge you to stop in and see any one of the seven locations and let them help you, along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. <laughs> I choked to death at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. I want to remind you, the 47th annual Salmon Select Horse and Mule Sale going on today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Oh, my goodness. They are going to have a ripping good time up there. Uh, they've got social hours today and a wolf howling contest, Dutch oven dinners tomorrow the mule sale and of course the mule races and saturday the great big horse sale oh my it's all there for you idaho's premier absolutely 47th annual salmon select horse and mule sale lem high county fairgrounds up in salmon this weekend worth the drive a lot of fun you stop up and see them also really quick i want to remind you about patterson's at 421 east main in burley hello curtis and lorena lorena really a nice lady sitting there the other day when i walked in and she and everybody ready to serve you with the best, the best of all your electronic needs. Mm -hmm. Home theater systems. Let's talk about comfort. Let's talk about going home into your safe abode and enjoying a wonderful home theater system. Or maybe you want to kind of fix the car up a little bit. Car stereos and speakers, complete sound systems, all of this and so much more at Patterson's 421 East Main in Burley, number to call 678-6997. They're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6 at Patterson's. And real quick, before we get our Chamber of Commerce report, woo, running late this morning as usual, I want to remind you about our dear, dear friend Joel Hewitt, his family, and his staff at Hanson Mortuary. You know, he's never ever without his smile. He's never, ever without uh, something that says he really cares and he wants to serve you. Joel Heward and, of course, the staff at Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. They really care, and they provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort 
and always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please remember the number to call, 436-5636, 436-5636, Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, and Joel Heward also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main and Burley. It is time for the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce report, and right now there's a rumor going around that at this time, of the year, tax time, Leiden Crane has rolled his Coleman sleeping bag up in the corner of the office for the day, and he is pushing a pencil. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Zeb. I, I was wondering, do you think I could teach one of those mules to do taxes? Uh, you want to comment or not? <laughs> I would use a different terminology, but no, no, no. Hey, listen, I've got one quick question for you, and uh, I'm not trying to avoid getting right to the chamber report, but one question that's been asked by many, many people, myself included, why is President Trump any less of a citizen of the United States and has all the rights that we have, he I don't see any reason why he should subject himself to the demands of Democrats and turn over his tax returns of six years ago. I don't see anything legal. Am I wrong? I, I don't see any reason why he should do that, and I don't know if the Democrats would know how to read it if they got it. I mean, most people are, <laughs> yeah, to look at those tax returns, there's so much that goes behind those. And uh, but anyway, we'll we'll have to see what ultimately happens on that. The, the IRS has statute of limitations that go back three years for most returns, six years in the case of fraud. So to go back any further than that would just seem a little extensive to me. But. We'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Absolutely. Leiden, you have been an outstanding voice for the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. So now uh, enter stage left and pick up the microphone and tell us what's going on with the chamber. All right. Uh, we They have been very busy, and I've been trying to keep up with them here as uh, I've kind of gone into my most busy week. So hopefully we can do a good job of giving you kind of an update here. Um, the, the main event that we have coming up for the Chamber is definitely the Women's Expo, which uh, we've talked about the last couple weeks, but we're, we're almost there. We've got two weeks. Um, April 24th is the day. It's going to be at the uh, Burley Best Western Convention Center from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and we've got our major sponsor for that event is Idaho Central Credit Union. We appreciate them and all that they do for our community. If you need anything for banking, Go over and see them, and they'll help you out with uh, loans, bank accounts, uh, business items, whatever you need. And uh, so the the event, like I said, is going to be on April 24th. The uh, ticket price to get in is uh, $20, and that includes lunch and uh, access to the venue for the whole day. We've got a lot of uh, companies that have signed up to be vendors and uh, booth spaces there. We only have a couple of those left. They're, they're almost sold out. So if you're a business and thinking about wanting to participate in that, we better get on it soon because um, those are going to be gone here in the next couple of days. So. All right. Now, that's coming up on the 24th, and I know that you have probably a 10-inch piled high with notes on other events. What else is happening? Um, we also have a new ribbon cutting coming up. Um, April 16th um, at the Minidoka Memorial Hospital, they have done an upgrade to their radiology department, and uh, they've invited the chamber and the community over to participate in that. It will begin at 4 p.m. The address for the hospital there is uh, 1224 8th Street in Rupert, and uh, it's always a, a great thing to look at. and. Uh, you know, kind of see some of the, the health services that are out there and meet some of the great folks who work over there. Okay. So that will be coming up. You know, you say ribbon cutting. I'm still waiting for the day, because I love funny things like this. I'm still waiting for the day they take these extra large scissors and try to cut the ribbon, and it's uh -uh, not going to happen. <laughs> well, th those could probably use a little sharpening, but... Uh, the, the sheer weight of them, I think, is more than sufficient to get through that poor little <laughs> ribbon. It doesn't stand much of a chance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I know as we get into the summer here, there's, you know, people are climbing out of the cave from hibernation from winter and wanting to get other businesses going. And 
um, the, the chamber is always there to serve the community. And if, if you want to become a member, give us a call. Um, we'd love to, to set you up and help you get a ribbon cutting for your new business. Um, it's a, a great chance to get some exposure to the community and, and meet others who already do business here. Are you practicing your golf game? I heard rumors that you're going to be in the golf tournament. You know, I think this year I may man our booth. I'm, I'm still debating that. It, we've, we've got an intern coming this year who's a, a really good golfer, and so I may let him kind of carry the torch for the company, and I'll just sit back and enjoy a, a cold drink and uh, talk to everybody but yeah uh, yes the the chamber golf scramble is coming up i believe we've filled i think we have one more sponsorship position open for the lunch sponsor if there's a business that's interested in that and the the teams i believe are already full so it's going to be a great event and we'd love to add one more great sponsor so okay anything else on your list i've got a minute left uh, you know, I don't, I don't think so right now. If uh, if there's anybody who would be interested in our leadership program, I know we've talked about that before, but um, we're getting ready to start that in August this year, and uh, it's a great chance for people who are just getting started here in the community to um, meet a couple of other newcomers and uh, learn about everything that we've got in the community. We take eight different months and take you to various businesses, give you tours. Uh, let you shake hands and rub shoulders with some of the great minds and business uh, workers that we have here in our area. And so, again, if you're interested in that, give the Chamber a call at 679-4793. You know, you really do a great job, and I'm very appreciative that you take the time to get on this program, Leiden Crane. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for you. I'll bet you that you've got the alarm clock set for, like, 2 in the morning to get up, work for a while, and then take a nap, go back and work some more. It's busy time for you. Yeah, the nap would be nice. I'm still trying to work that one into the schedule. <laughs> Lydon, God bless you, man. Thank you so much for being on the program this morning on behalf of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Zeb. Have a great day. All right, sir. There is a good, good young man, and I really appreciate having him on the program. Hey, I want to remind you, too, that this Saturday, oh, boy, Saturday morning, don't forget, 10 o'clock, right over there at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds, you'd better be at the Spring Community Sale, managed by Roggy Auction Company. Oh, oh. Ron Roggy, Cade Roggy, Jade South, they're all going to be there. Hey, bit them up, boys, here we go. You betcha they're still taking consignments, too. Farm equipment. Uh, livestock equipment, loaders, guns, everything. So please contact Ron Roggy at 431-6187. 431-6187. Great big spring community sale this Saturday at 10 o'clock at the Minidoki County Fairgrounds. Yep. Don't you miss it. It's going to be a dandy. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to Mondays. I, I just love that little segment on Mondays with Vicky's Country Gardens. Mm -hmm. It's called Green Thumbs, Dirty Knees, and Vicky's Country Garden. And if you have any questions you want me to ask Vicky, all you have to do is send them to Zeb at the Ranch at hotmail.com, and we'll put those on the program regarding any and all gardening questions. So please uh, give us a jingle. That's coming up on Mondays at 10.30. Uh, let's see what else have I got. Oh, my goodness. LeGrand sent this over on behalf of Lee's Furniture Floors and more. It's a great big spring clearance event. Whoa. Listen, limited quantities. Once they're gone, they're gone. I'm talking about maybe mattresses. Oh, my goodness. They've got a great big closeout on warehouse mattress wipeout. Everything's going to go. And uh, don't forget, too, they've got a flooring closeout. And they're having all kinds of furniture closeout. You better stop in and check it out. It's called the Big Spring Clearance Event at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Up to 48 months on approved credit. You stop in and see them today at 459 Overland and Burley, the best serving you at Lee's Furniture, Floors and more. Let's go to the phone line right now and we have with us a lady by the name of Barbara Higgs and we're going to be talking about a special event. Julie, good morning. How, or pardon me, Barbara, how are you this morning? Thank you for being on the program. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm great. 
Well, good, good. I know that uh, you are the person in charge of a lot of the information for a great big special event, a book drive and a clothing drive. I'm just going to let you explain what's going on and how people can get involved in it. Go ahead, please. Okay, great. I am actually on a committee for an event called Julie's Clothes for Kids, which is going to take place in August. And I'm in charge of a book drive um, that's taking place right now until April 28th. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about the project that we're doing in in August. Okay. Um, It's sponsored by an organization called Young Caring for Our Young, which uh, was established in 2007 by Spencer and Sherry Young. And it's a private nonprofit 501c3 foundation. And their goal is to provide funding for local education foundations and other nonprofit causes um, that directly impact youth in northern Utah and southern Idaho. And um, they are helping with this event that we are having in our community on August 9th, and it's called Julie's Clothes for Kids event. Um, and what they're doing, it, it's patterned after something they've been doing uh, in Utah for the Davis Education Foundation. Um, They do a child spree. And um, we're cooperating with the Minidoka and Kasha School Districts to identify children who live in homes that are in need or below poverty level. And they're going to identify 100 children that will be selected to come and participate in this event. And um, the event involves the children coming and uh, being taken on a shopping spree Mm -hmm. at Walmart Mm -hmm. to get them school clothes that they need. So they'll be getting um, school clothes, shoes, socks, underwear, uh, all the items that they need to start school, um, backpack, and school supplies will be provided. And um, this event is being sponsored by not only them, but multiple businesses are cooperating. There's going to be about $30,000 in child sponsorship. Hopefully, they're oh, still wow. looking for sponsors. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, so part of this is that each child will receive a book um, or two and uh, to, for their very own so that they can have that to enjoy and practice reading at home. And so my part in that is to collect books. And um, hopefully many of you have seen uh, book drops all over the community. They're in the public schools, um, in many churches. Um, We have them over at Young Automotive, at Walmart, Swenson's in Paul, Ridley's in Rupert, um, and more. And... um, what we're asking is that people uh, bring new or very gently used books that we can use to give away to the children. Okay, Barbara, let me ask you, Barbara, let me ask you a question right there. I think it's very important. Okay. What types of books are you looking for and what age brackets? Okay. The age bracket is ages 5 to 18, so basically our K through 12 age because there will be kids of all ages. Right. And uh, books that are appropriate for that um, for that age group. Um, whatever you deem appropriate, I think, is great. And... Um, something that they would enjoy reading. Okay. Now, certainly with this kind of a book drive, and you're looking, I believe it said, for over 300 new and gently used books, you've got to have various drop-off points within the sound of our voices. Do you want to tell everybody where they can take these books? Yes. Yes. So um, all of the public schools have drop boxes in their front foyers, um, as well as several churches in the community. The information's been emailed out to to all of them, and so hopefully you're getting that information through your church. Um, And uh, Young Automotive and the GMC has drop boxes, Walmart. um, uh, In Paul, you can drop it off at Swenson's, in Rupert Ridley's, in Elmo, at the Tracy store, in Malta, Fuel Depot. There's just many places that you can drop them off, and we're hoping to fill all those boxes. 
Let me ask you this. Once you fill the boxes of books, uh, Barbara, what about the kids? How are they going to be uh, acknowledging that the books are there and that they might have a book that they want to read? I mean, where do they go? How do they find out about the books? Okay. So um, what, what these books will go to is for the event of the Julie's Clothes for Kids event in August. And these kids that have been selected to go on the shopping spree for school clothes, um, there will be books there, and they will each be able to select I see. some books to take home. Because we want to, part of our goal is to set these children up for success in their education um, we, we feel like if they have their own basic needs met, that they'll be prepared to start school with confidence and be prepared to learn. And we want um, them to know that learning not only takes place in school, but it also can take place at home. So that's where those books will go. And, you know, if for some reason that we exceed our goal of the 300 books, we have been made aware that the United Way is having a book drive, and we will. We would love to share with them as well. So we are going to make sure that those books are put to good use and um, that our kids can foster a love of learning through reading. Absolutely. That was very well stated. You did a really good job. Now, I want you to give us the particulars again about the book drive and then tie it into the August 9th event, to which we'll have you back on the air prior to that. But tie it all together real quick for me. Okay. All right. So we're doing a, a book drive. We need at least 300 new and gently used books. They'll be distributed in conjunction with the Julie's Clothes for Kids. This event is in memory of Julie Brashears, who uh, uh, was in Declo. She passed away about a year ago and was everybody called her Mama Julie, and she just had a love for kids, neighborhood, church, school kids, and she was very involved in the community. And we're honoring her through this event. Um, and they're going to be providing school clothes, educational resources, and books for kids. And that's what this book drive is uh, working towards is this event. I want to tell you something, uh, Barbara, you did an outstanding job, and I know you sounded like you might be a little nervous. Well, you shall not feel that way, because you did a great job, and I'm going to urge you to go to your calendar, and prior to August 9th, we'll hit this again on my program, okay? Would love that. We would love that. Well, thank Thank you, you and and thank you, and God bless you for what you're doing to help others. I appreciate that. Thank you much. You have a great day. You too. Thank you very, very much. Nice, nice lady right there, Barbara Higgs. And we will keep informing you uh, on that issue. So thank you very much. Books, books, and clothes. That's great. I want to remind you about our friends at uh, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Hello, Todd. Hello, group. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and so much more as they serve you, your family family and your business boy i tell you they're dedicated and responsive to your needs all you need to do all you need to do is call them at 436-4424 cameron and siemens insurance highway 24 in rupert absolutely the best oh and our dear friends over at let's ride caller i'll be right there don't go away let's ride 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world where the fun is sold oh it's true they've got all the four-wheelers all the side-by-sides they've got everything for you to get outside and just go just go enjoy the great outdoors and don't forget along with all that they've got all the accessories and they've got a service department to keep you running with tyson and the rest of the folks oh good people at let's ride they're open monday through friday nine to six saturdays nine to four 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world let's ride where the fun is sold caller good morning you're on the air yes i have a quick question Zeb. i didn't hear the beginning to your guest was is she from the chamber? Uh, n- no, I don't think so. You mean uh, uh, Barbara that was just on a moment ago? I didn't hear the beginning when she was on, so I don't know where she was from. Yeah, Barbara is, I assume, just a very concerned citizen that's helping out with the Julie's Clothes for Kids along with the book drive. And uh, if you'll call me after the program, if you got something for her, I'll give you her number. Oh, 
I have probably four or five hundred books, yes. I'm looking for a place to go with them. Oh, well, my goodness, yes. I'll tell you what, I don't think she'd mind if I gave it to you over the air. If you got a pencil real quick, I'll give it to you. It's 650-2400. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I thank you very much. All right, God bless you. Thank you for your call. Uh, don't forget Lunch Bunch next Thursday at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, at 611 North Overland and Burley. Next Thursday, the 18th, at 1130. We're looking forward to it. So don't you miss it. Absolutely going to be a lot of fun. I uh, want to also remind you about Jeff and the crew. We're going to talk about them in just a minute. You should see what I just did. I tipped up all the uh, commercials into a nice cluster. <laughs> Oh, Magic Valley Irrigation at 44 East, 500 South of Burley. Jeff and the rest of the crew over there at Magic Valley Irrigation say thank you to all the farmers, ranchers, and dairymen for all their support. And don't forget, they've been offering irrigation system service and repair to the Burley area since 1978. Let their specialists serve you. Give them a call, 678-1301. That number again for Jeff and the gang, they are good, good people. Magic Valley Irrigation. Six seven eight one three zero one. When I talk about good people, every week on this program, I am blessed with having this lady be a part of my show. And uh, her name is Rita Ramsey, and she is a sharp, sharp lady. Good morning, Rita. How are you? She's barely calling in, so give me one. Barely call- How do you define barely calling in? I believe that she's barely ready to go. Are you barely there? I'm barely here. I hope I didn't have you in the lurch. No, lurch is on the Adams family. I can't oh, imitate him. You know, we were talking about that the other day. Where's the good kind of TV anymore? No, it's gone. It's dead. It's been buried. You know, now that you mention it, my dear lady, um, when I think back to the sitcoms when I was a young man, they relied on comedy. They relied on really funny things like the Dick Van Dyke Show, the Real McCoys, and others. And that's long been dead and buried. It, it's such sad, but it's true. Well, it is. And the other thing that we were talking about is, you know, the kids can't even get good cartoons anymore. Oh, they're pathetic. Satellite can, uh, I guess if you have Netflix, but I don't do that. You can go back and find some of the old ones, but... You know, the old cartoons and the old programs we'd watch in the evenings and on Sunday nights and stuff. Well, remember, remember cartoons? i got to ask you this because I know you're so much younger than I am, but I'll ask you anyway. Uh, do you remember, like, Foghorn Leghorn? I say, I say, boy, I say, boy, remember him? Oh, yeah, and, you know, the Roadrunner and yeah. I mean, just all of those. They were just... They were just crazy fun. And on Sunday nights, you know, it was almost a sin if a family didn't gather around the television set and watch Bonanza. Oh, I know. That was like one of our favorites. We were kind of talking about, remember when you could see The Wizard of Oz only one time a year? And yeah. You could only see The Ten Commandments one time a year? and. Those were the good old days, but you know, it was clean, it was family entertainment, and there were no eyebrows raised, and mom and dad going, oh, I think you better go in the other room now, kids. And uh, then, of course, there was the Ed Sullivan shoe, with a really big shoe every week, and like the introduction of major groups like the Beatles and everything. I remember all that, because I'm an old man. Well, I know, and it's just really sad that they've just... It's deteriorated over the years to where the the young people anymore they they don't know what just real true comedy is that's fun they just know what stupid stuff is. you know and and think about this because I, if the Nielsen ratings and a guy called me one night from the Nielsen TV ratings and I told him I said there is not one single network show not one that I enjoy watching. I don't care if it's a sitcom. I don't care if it's a detective show. I don't care what it is. He said, well, what do you watch? And I said, I watch the news programs for Honest News, and I watch sports programs, or I watch the old cowboy movie channel. I will not be subjected to this idiocy and filth that they put on the networks. 
Well, that's really true. The networks just don't really have anything. I've, I've reverted over, and I, I tell my family, I said, I only have two channels on my TV. One of them's Hallmark, and the other one's DIY. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're like Deanna. She, she loves all those home improvement shows and the gardening shows and everything, which is fine. I even find out that I'm interested in that, more so than I am these absolutely stupid, sexually disoriented comedies that are on prime time. Well, it is, and it's, it's just really funny. We have a call with a question already. How do we make somebody mad in four minutes? I don't know. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Quickly, real fast. I'm not mad. I'm just reminiscing. I mean, <laughs> I, I watch Gunsmoke and A Little House on a Prairie and all those shows, but I just realized as I'm older now, all the Gunsmoke is is drinking a beer and fighting and shooting each other. <laughs> no, no, come on. You're not being fair. Doggone it. You're a good friend of mine, but I am an aficionado of Gunsmoke, and there were a lot of good storylines on Gunsmoke that didn't involve just drinking a beer or fighting or shooting somebody. Come on now. Be decent. Uh, but what I'm saying, it didn't, it didn't, I'm not going around shooting people now. Uh, <laughs> I knew the difference, and we, we realized, you know, there were some darn good writers that wrote those stories. Yeah, but there were also, and I think you'll agree with me on this, there were some darn good character actors, whether it was Milburn Stone playing Doc, whether it was uh, 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 Chester's, uh, I forgot all of a sudden the name that played Chester, and there was James Arness playing uh, Matt Dillon, and then, of course, you looked at Festus that was played by Ken Curtis. I love the Festus character, and there's never, in my opinion, been, a, ever since, a character Character that was played as well as Festus on TV. Right, and and Doc, you know, yeah. Doc, he, we always look and wait. We wait for him with a hand movement. Yeah. He'll, before long, he'll put his hand up to his face and rub it across his chin. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> You're spot on. Find it more now than we did when we were younger. Yeah, abs you know, I'm glad you took this walk down memory lane with Rita and I because it's true. Thank you for your call. I really do appreciate it. You know, I can think back, Rita, and I don't know if you were ever into the Western genre like I was, but Maverick and Cheyenne and the Big Valley and uh, Wells Fargo and Wanted Dead or Alive or all the I watched every one of those religiously. Well, we did, too, and, and it was probably because we didn't have much other choice, but I'll tell you one thing, and Wild Wild West was one that was really kind yeah. of good, yeah. is that the good people always won, and it helped you to have faith in the law, and it helped you to have faith that if, if you were on the right side of doing what's right, that you would be the winner, and that's not the way that it is anymore, and I think a lot of it is because of what we watch on TV and and the good guys don't always win. I I refuse to go to movies if if somebody says, well, I didn't like the way that it turned out in the end. It's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to waste my money on that. I'm going to put you on the spot. I am. I'm going to put you on the spot. And if you get this correct, I am going to buy you lunch with your husband someday in the next couple of weeks. Do you remember on the Wild Wild West, what were the character names that were in the lead? Who were the lead character names? Oh. That's not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there was the West guy, and then his sidekick. How about how about James West and Artemis Gordon? Artemis, I kept wanting to think R or something, but yep. Artemis Gordon or what? Yeah, was it? Artemis Gordon and James West. You know, and they were. It was kind of a modern day, if you will, or an old West day James Bond type philosophy. Well, it really was, and and that's why you know I think that's why we liked. TV back then in the in the good old days. That sounds terribly old, doesn't it? But but it's, it's that the the good people won, and the bad guys were were um, arrested and had handcuffs and had to go off to jail or something. Oh yeah, and or dead. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> dead or anyway. <laughs> but there were also sitcoms that you could sit down with your family and not be embarrassed. There was the Donna Reed show. Like I said, the Real McCoys. There were detective shows that were good, like 77 Sunset Strip and all those. They were good shows. Oh, yeah, and even back in the day, you know, uh, old, uh, what's his name, the Blue Bloods guy, all of a sudden my mind went blank. Oh, uh, you're talking about Magnum P.I. Yes, Magnum P.I. Tom P. Selleck. Y-5-0, yeah. and just all of those, they were just plain old good. Uh, you know, and, and believe me, if TV would turn back to that, uh, I think society would also turn back to being better. Well, I think they would because a lot of times <clears throat> our what's what's um, put into our hearts and kind of you know etched into our minds is is the kind of person that we become. And when we watch and take part in really good wholesome things, it helps to be more wholesome. Mm-hmm. And when we've just got violence and stuff like that, then I think we turn to more violence. I agree. We've got another caller with a question. Good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Well, I don't really have a question, but I have a comment, and that is Walker, Texas Ranger. I will not watch that show. Why? That is so violent. Um, Yeah, but the good guys always win. Go ahead. I said the good guys always win, though, Keith. Yeah. One of my favorite shows, and and it's, it's on TV, you know, nowadays through the Western Channel. And that's Tales of Wells Fargo, mm-hmm. Dale Robertson. Mm-hmm. That guy, he was really good, and, and his show was so wholesome that he was always looking out for people, even though he was, you know, he stayed within the law and everything else, but the way they ended sometimes was made you feel good. Now, you know something? I had a chance to meet that man, Dale Robertson. He lived back in Oklahoma, and he owned the uh, ranch called the Haymaker Ranch. And he raised some outstanding quarter horses, and he was really, really a nice man. He, he appears to be on TV, and I would like to have met him someday. I did some research on him here a while back. I don't know how to do that, but my nephew does, and he said he passed away. He was 91 yeah. or 92, something like that, yeah. in Montana. Um, to my knowledge, Dale Robertson uh, passed. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I thought he had passed away uh, while living still on his ranch in Oklahoma. Uh, I'll check on that to verify, but I I do appreciate your call this morning, Keith. God bless you for chiming in on our walk down memory lane. Thank you very much. All right. You know, Rita, and, and the thing about the sitcoms back in those days, whether it was like the Donna Reed show or whatever, they had a message, but they did it in such a decent and and family way uh, that you, you, you just enjoyed it. And the humor was always there with the different uh, characters on the show. Uh, we don't have that anymore. Well, we really don't. And, you know, it's, it's just really sad. And, um, you know, there was Gilligan's Island and the Beverly Hillbillies. And, I mean, they were just plain... They were plain crazy, but they were just fun. Yeah, you could let yourself kind of go a little bit. And uh, let me ask you this real quick. If today, tonight at 8 o'clock prime time, a show came out like Father Knows Best, I will bet you that all the women's libbers and the, all the other groups, the ACLU, they would come out and condemn it because Father Knows Best. Oh, absolutely. They have to find something wrong with it, and and it's always like, well, everybody's got to be equal. Well, you know what? We are all equal, but we're different. Absolutely. I mean, I don't have the same capabilities as men do because of the way that my body is constructed, and and it's just really sad that we have such uh, (laughs) short-sighted people that just continually harp at that. Absolutely. We have a caller with a question. Go ahead. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes, just quickly. The thing that offends me the most with these newer video programs is the horrible violence and the rotten, filthy language that we never had in the other ones. 
And that's my comment. Amen. That lady, I think Rita hit it right on the head. Can you imagine when you and I were growing up if they would have put even a smidgen of the language then that they use now? Well, the thing of it is, is they wouldn't permit it. I mean, I remember, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I remember my aunt and uncle telling me that if people swore on the telephone, they would cut them off. Yeah. And so, and it was the same way across the airwaves, you know, the, the uh, Communications Commission, they, you know, take these people, you can't do this and you can't do that, and... And, and it's just too bad that there isn't more censoring anymore. You know, and some of the funniest uh, things that happened on television were late night shows with Steve Allen, Johnny Carson, and others. And they didn't hammer the president. They didn't demean the presidency or the administration. They may have poked fun on various occasions at certain little things, but they really, uh, they really studied comedy and they learned how to promote it. Today, it's not like that at all. With the filth of, like, Stephen Colbert and others, I will never turn them on. Well, the thing about the late-night TV shows now is all they are is political to see if we can't just, uh, you know, hone in on somebody and destroy them. That's, That's basically their agendas. I agree. You know, we got catered away from our politics a little bit. We'll take one quick call, and then I've got to do a weather. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. How about the Carol Burnett show? Absolutely one of the best ever. Yes. Oh, Tim Conway would have them in stitches, the whole audience in stitches. I mean, it, he was sometimes the funniest, and the funniest skit was the Siamese twin elephant. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know, Tim Conway, and I'm sure Rita would agree, and Harvey Corman, they could walk onto the stage, and they could stand perfectly still, and then look at each other occasionally, and I, the watcher and the viewer, would break out laughing. Oh yeah, yeah they they were they were a great team, and I don't think they even needed a, a script. They didn't use it very often. <laughs> even not laughing when they were performing, because it was just hilarious, and they were. Oh, good. Now, Doug is spot on. That show, I think, should be down as one of the greatest all-time variety shows ever in the history of television. Carol Burnett with her great facial expressions, Harvey Corman, and then, of course, Tim Conway. In my opinion, none could be better. Oh, no, and, you know, we could just kind of go on forever. In fact, it would probably make us feel better if we talked about this instead of politics. <laughs> Remember McHale's Navy? Yes. Jim Conway? Yes. I mean, all of them were just like, I, I, I don't know if you could say what a favorite was, but because they were all just so good. One person I have to throw into the fray, though, that is, in my opinion, one of the funniest men ever to be on television. Maybe you won't agree, but that would be Andy of Mayberry's Don Knotts as Barney Fife. Oh, we were talking about that the other day, and, you know, the shakiest gun in the West, <laughs> some of those things that he was in, he was just an absolute hoot. Absolutely. And we just loved him, and he was he was kind of portrayed to be the, you know, kind of the guy that just can't get it, but he, he was so good, and we just loved him because of it, and but it, you- was, it was a, a time for enjoyment and if entertaining absolutely i gotta get a weather forecast here and then we'll maybe take another trip down memory lane uh phillips oaks goodwin crane and company providing accounting services to the minicasha area for well over 50 years we talked to Leiden crane earlier this morning they're busy oh are they busy at this time of the year with all the tax return preparation tax planning and and all the other financial statement preparation everything to serve you your family and your business with offices in Burley and Rupert. Remember, work with the best. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Right now, here's Jeannie. Jeannie. Gina with the weather. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of rain for today and slightly breezy. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Mostly cloudy skies is what we're looking at. We do have a slight chance of rain showers this afternoon and expecting a high of 52 winds out of the west at about 15 miles an hour, gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, expecting a low of 34. Tomorrow, a slight chance of rain and or snow showers in the morning. That's going to give way to rain by the afternoon, mostly cloudy skies. Still breezy. 
expecting a high of 52 by Friday night. Partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Hopefully for Saturday we're going to see a little bit of sunshine with a high of 57. By Sunday, mostly cloudy skies. Chance of rain showers and a high of 56. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the Rain. Appreciate it, Gina. And thank you very much for giving us our weather. And don't forget Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Busy, busy accounting services for you. Give them a call, please, or stop into their Burley or Rupert office locations. They are there to serve you. They are the professionals. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. You know, another person, and pardon me, Rita, for staying on this subject, but another person that I don't think should ever ever be overlooked as far as comedy was concerned and that was red skelton oh wasn't he just hilarious clem cadiddle hopper yeah that, that brought us to one of the things we were talking about when we kind of went down this the other day too around here at the shop it, he was just it was so good and even though it was silent you could just you just knew well, everything and you you knew what was going on you didn't have to be told you didn't have to hear it you could just get it, and it was just hilarious. What was the name of the character of the sheriff that he played on occasion for the old-time Western sheriff? I can't remember the name that he oh, used. I don't know. But there was a skit, and I, I think the actor that he had on that segment was uh, Michael Landon, I believe, from Bonanza. And Skelton and, and Michael Landon were doing a skit, and I, in the skit, and you know, a lot of this was live TV back then, Rita, and... Uh, uh, Skelton was supposed to pick up a chair, you know, one of those chairs that would bust apart, and he was supposed to hit Landon with a chair. <laughs> and he picked it up and he hit him and it didn't break. <laughs> <laughs> that was what made it good, is that you didn't know the outcome necessarily. <laughs> and I never will forget the look on Skelton's face when the chair was still in one piece on his hand and Landon had really taken a pretty good blow from that chair and he just looked at the camera and he didn't have to say a word. <laughs> It was so funny. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. I'm just kind of catching the end of your program, but uh, I have to ask, do you remember Jim Neighbors as the Gomer Pyle? Well, howdy. Yes, I do. And can, and the awe we all felt when we first heard his voice singing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He was a fantastic actor. I'll never forget on those shows, Andy of Mayberry, that when uh, the Gomer came into the uh, the show as the gas station attendant, and like you, the first time that we heard him saying, I'm an old man and I can still remember vividly that baritone voice just going boom, and I thought, wow, that guy is something else. And it was so different from his comical character. Oh, yeah, 100 degrees. hundred. Absolutely, you're 100% right. Thank you so much for calling in. I, I'd forgotten about uh, Gomer Pyle and uh, and the way that that character came in. But really, Rita, when you go back, and you, we're overlooking quite a few of the great, great actors and actresses. Lucille Ball, Desi and Lucy, they had an outstanding comedy uh, show. Oh. I, it comes on Hallmark in the middle of the night, and sometimes I watch that, and it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, I just can't imagine how funny it was, and it is still funny, and it's still <laughs> You know, there's I Dream of Jeannie and Bewitched. Yeah. I mean, you just start in, and you, there's just tons of them, and they were all good. Absolutely. Call her quickly. We've got a couple of minutes left, and we really have not followed our script. Go ahead. Good morning. Yes, Ma and Pa Kittle. They didn't use a swear word one, and it was just good, good comedy. I agree with you. That's that's another one, too. You can keep going back, and you know, a lot of my slogan at the end of the program would be applicable to television, the way things were, the way things ought to be. Wouldn't you agree, Rita? Oh, yeah, you know, and, and talking about that, you know, there was Lassie and My Favorite Martian, and... I mean, you just stop and think of how many how many fun things there were. I bet you we could take calls the rest of your show, plus probably the rest of the day, uh, of people calling in and talking about the good old days with TV. Uh, you know, do you remember? Do you remember on Ed Sullivan? I, I hate to interrupt you, but I got to ask you this quick before we run out of time. Do you remember the name of the mouse on the Ed Sullivan show? No, I don't. Topo Gigio. <laughs> Remember that? 
I did not remember that. Holy nope. cow, that's funny. That shows you how warped my old mind is. I remember a dog con rat. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and speaking of rats, you know, um, <clears throat> on Bewitched, there was Paul Lind was the crazy uncle. Oh my gosh! And then remember him on the was it the Hollywood Square? That yes. On all the time? Yes. We were talking about this. He was the rat in um, uh, Charlotte's Web. That's right. And and so whenever I think of Paul Lind, I always think of the rat. Absolutely. We've got exactly 30 seconds left. Call her real fast, please. Hey, Zeb, this is Clarkson. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in real quick. I have a antenna just getting TV over the air, and I get a lot of these old programs all day long. Absolutely. It, uh, it, it, it's crazy. <laughs> well, I don't blame... Hey, uh, hey keep up the good work. Man. All right. Thank you very much for your call. Rita, you know what? I... <laughs> It's not what we were going to talk about. It's not politics. But I've enjoyed our conversation. Thank you very much for chiming in with this. Well, it's good to have a little change in scenery, so that's good then. Oh, God See bless you. you. <laughs> Rita Ramsey, thank you so much, and uh, we'll look forward to next week. Thank you. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Thank you very much. I'm old. I remember all of those, and we did enjoy them. Hey, right now I'm starving to death. I am hungry. Oh, do I know some great places for you and I to go, like the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley. Oh, they've got those mint Oreo shakes. Try one. Mm -mm, great. And the famous Farmer Brown burgers with fries and sauce. Oh, my goodness, you've got to get in there today. Or a fish basket with fries. That'll really knock your tail or your your tail. Uh, Taste buds for a loop. Atta boy, Zeb, you killed the ad. Stop in today and wonderful people serving you at AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley. Well, how about Taco Bandito at 2301 Overland in Burley? One of the great places to go for your morning coffee. And then maybe along with that coffee, have a breakfast burrito with scrambled eggs, bacon and sausage, cheese, onions, tomatoes, and sauce on a tortilla shell. Oh, oh, oh. great food. All day long at Taco Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Let's not forget Burgers Etc. Two locations to serve you at 124 South of Night in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley. And they've got the fish sandwich combo after 3 p.m. It is really, really good. Don't forget that. And uh, always nice people. Regardless of what you order, they're always there with a smile on their face. They're going to be closed on Easter as they should be, but they're open every other day. Stop into Burgers, etc., Rupert and Burley. And don't forget Stevo's at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Oh my goodness. Food made the way you love it. Mm, delicious. With the buffalo burgers and the cheesy broccoli spud. And don't forget all the cupcakes. All the great menu choices for you and your family. And really a friendly, dedicated staff at Stevo's 290 South 600 West of Hayburn. Those are just a few great places to go when you're hungry and starving to death. I am. Right now, uh, we're going to take a little break and come back with Cache County School Days and a lot of other things coming up next hour, so stay tuned. Zeb at the Ranch, we'll be right back. Oh, good morning, and welcome back to our last hour right here on Zeb at the Ranch for this week. April 11th, my goodness, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great, big, huge spring tire sale going on right now. Along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. We're going to be going to Cache County School Days in just a few moments. Stand by, but I want to remind you this Saturday, oh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds, the great big spring community sale put on by Roggy Auction Company. Mm -hmm. Going to be a dandy. 
I guarantee it. They're still taking consignments, too. Call Ron Roggy at 431-6187. 431-6187 for the great big spring community sale to be held this weekend on Saturday at 10 o'clock at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. I mean, farm equipment and loaders and guns and all kinds of things there. Please call them today. Ron Roggy at 431-6187 at this big spring community sale Saturday morning at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. And uh, without further ado, I also want to acknowledge the fact that, as soon as I get my paper turned here, our dear friends with Dino Septic Service, oh my goodness sakes, these are good people. And they do a job that you and I don't want to do. Oh no, septic tank pumping and liquid waste removal and sewer and sink drain lines cleaned and all this and so much more. Backhoe services, all of it. Call them today. Dino Septic Service. Write the name down. Dino Septic Service and the number is 436-6526 or in Burley 678-1638. Fast, fair, friendly service. Absolutely with the big truck that says smells cargo on the way. Dino's Septic Service. We are blessed on Thursdays to have a segment on our program called Cashew County School Days, and uh, it's brought to you by A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley, and they've got all the spring clothing there, and they've got all the clothing to dress up and look really, really nice going to church on Easter, all of this, and so much more. So please, why don't you stop in, and you get to choose an egg, and open the egg, and then see if you get an extra special saving on your purchases at a child's world 1308 overland in burley you stop in and see those good folks today with us on the program this morning is the cashew district nurse and her name is Lori stimson good morning Lori. how are you Good, I'm doing great. How are you this morning? Not too bad, and I really appreciate you taking the time to come on our program. Uh, Lori, I'm going to tell you straight up that I am not just an advocate. I am demanding that vaccination programs be adhered to and that all school children are vaccinated. Am I wrong? You are absolutely correct. I believe that vaccine is our best thing for these childhood illnesses. Let me ask you quickly, are you on a speakerphone or handheld? I'm on a speaker. Can you hear me? No, turn the speakerphone off and go to the handheld. It makes too much of an echo. Please, Lori, if you would. Okay, is that better? Yeah, just speak directly into it. Lori, there seems to be, well, it doesn't seem to be, there is uh, a blatant rejection by many, many parents in this country of vaccination programs with unfound unbased uh, information. They get off the internet and they run rampant with it, and this is causing a lot of problems. Would you care to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I think that um, social media and misinformation has a lot to do with parents signing to not have their kids vaccinated. Um, And I've seen on the national news that they're trying to get it that social media can't have those um, ill-informed or misinformed anti-vaccine campaigns on there. So nationwide, they're trying to make it so that the information on social media has to be correct. And, you know, with the medical research and stuff that we have nowadays, um, vaccines are safer than they've ever been. And so when we get the anti-vaccine groups out there talking and saying things that are incorrect and parents following those instructions, when they'd rather follow social media than the advice of their medical doctor than that, is very difficult. <laughs> it's not very difficult. It's almost impossible to overcome, and that's what I'm hoping we can talk about this morning. Now, as a school nurse, a district nurse, I'll bet you that you're right into the fray, perhaps with parents right here in this area. How big a problem with non-vaccinated children do we have in Cassia County? Um, well, um, I believe we have like... 5,600 kids, and we have 300 and something that are exempt that have signed the um, forms to not get their children vaccinated. And just with the measles outbreak in Washington and Oregon, the health department has um, had to send a paper out to 
So all of our families that are exempt or we don't have their record on file or maybe they've only had one measles vaccine instead of the two. And so um, the last couple weeks, we've been sending letters out to all the parents to notify them that it is in our neighboring state of Washington and Oregon. And, you know, with travel um, and the exposure, we just want to give them the opportunity to maybe rethink getting the vaccine. And so we're sending those letters out. And some of the parents are going and getting vaccinated and some are choosing to continue and um, have a form on file where they don't get vaccines. And in our district, I have the numbers in front of me now. We have um, 5,647 students and we have 334 that have um, signed forms to not get their child vaccinated. Lori, you're a lot nicer than I am. I can tell that by your voice. And you're not as demanding. I absolutely, as a parent and as a grandparent, I'm demanding that the school districts, not only yours, but all of them, use any and all power to come down on what was worded as, yes, you must have your children vaccinated before they attend X school, whether it's Cache County, Twin Falls County, uh, up in Pocatello, wherever. Why are we being so lenient with this problem that's exacerbating itself across the country and endangering other people? Well, and I truly believe that they should not come to school unless they're vaccinated. But we, unfortunately, in the state of Idaho, have those forms. In California, they do not let people sign exemptions after the measles outbreak in 2015. And so until our state legislature changes and we don't uh, let them come to school, then, you know, our hands are tied a little bit. I encourage it by any means the most that I can and try to explain to parents the complications of the illnesses. Um, But um, as long as our state is one of them that lets parents opt out, we're always going to have somebody that's going to fight it, unfortunately. And I've been on the front lines of talking until I'm blue in the face trying to get people to get in to get their child vaccinated. Absolutely. Lori, of the 50 states, and I don't mean to put you on the spot like this, but of the 50 states, how many of those, like Idaho, elect to have an opt-out policy? Um, The 50 states, I think there's, um, I want to say, like 19 or 20. I'm not 100% positive on that. I don't have that information. Okay, and what would we need to do, and who do we need to talk to, and how do we do need to do some arm twisting to tighten up the policy for the state of Idaho? It would be our state legislature. Um, we'd have to talk to the representatives at the state level. Um, like I said, in 2015, with the measles outbreak in Disneyland, California got it switched and you can't do personal or religious exemptions. You have to have medical exemptions only. And I was just back east um, not too long ago, and they were talking about the measles outbreak in New York, and they're not letting both students attend school for 30 days. They're, if they've been exposed or um, are exempt, then those kids cannot come to school for 30 days. And so it depends on each individual state. And right now in Idaho, Um, the legislature that we have to contact and get a hold of our state representatives and have them change that. Um, Being a school nurse for many years, we've had kids that have come from other states that they have to be vaccinated. And so they, those parents automatically just bring immunization records in because they know when they've been in the other states that they don't even let them step foot in the school until they have those immunization records. Lori, as a school nurse, and and you're closer to this than most anyone else, are you shocked or are you uh, kind of with the attitude of, I told you so, look out, when it comes to these diseases making a resurgence? I mean, we've had, uh, according to some of the numbers, when I talked to some people down in Atlanta, Georgia yesterday, uh, over 500 cases of measles in the outbreak, and we've also had a resurgence of a different strain of polio, of which I know probably more about than anybody else does because I'm a polio survivor. But are you surprised or did you expect this kind of outbreak because of a lackadaisical attitude on vaccinations? Well, and I kind of expected it because I've been in the medical profession for a while and I have seen some people that have had polio and um, measles, but we don't see 
um, like we used to. We used to have hospitals that had um, beds and beds of people that had measles and had brain damage and um, couldn't no longer function. Um, and so people don't see the effects of that because we had vaccines for so long that eliminated it. But now we have all these anti-vacciners, and so you don't see the consequences of polio and measles and meningitis. Um, meningitis, um, you know, they've had people in the media, like on Dancing with the Stars, that have lost limbs because they had meningitis and stuff. And so you don't see as, as much as you used to. But now that we're having a comeback, you're going to start to see the effects of these horrible um, diseases and the lifetime effects it can have on people. When uh, have. Absolutely. Now, I, again, I'm going to be blunt when I say this, and correct me, I've got big shoulders if I'm wrong, but with the resurgence of more people coming in from around all the points of the compass in the world to come here, be they refugees or illegal aliens, and no records or health records or immunization records, nothing uh, that we can hang our hat on, I honestly think that this is one of the reasons we're seeing such a resurgence in these diseases, and we've got to get a handle on it. Yes, I, I believe so, too. Um, you know, we get uh, records from other countries, um, from Mexico, from, uh, you know, Philippines, from China, from different places, and they're not up to date with a lot of our requirements. So we get those kids in as soon as we know and start getting them vaccinated. Um, and that's why it's so important to have those records for school. And in the state of Idaho, we now have an immunization reminder thing that we can put our kids' vaccines in. And so we can access that at the schools to see what immunizations they've had. Because that's the other problem we have is people don't have their paper copies or they lose records. Um, and if they cross state lines, too, that's another big issue. But we do have an uh, immunization reminder through the state of Idaho that we can pull up and see who's vaccinated and once they bring their records or go to their doctor's office with the records or the health department, that can be put in the immunization um, that data bank for Idaho. Let me ask so. you, Lori, when you sit down with these parents, you said there's over 300 children non-vaccinated in Cache County. That's scary to me. That is that is extremely scary to me because of the risk factor that they impose on others. But when you sit down with these parents, I mean uh, what kind of excuses? What kind of a lack of education? What really are their excuses, I mean, to subject not only their children, but other people to a health risk? They always try to say that the chemicals in the vaccines are going to cause autism or different problems, but it's been proven that that's not a fact. Um, you know, and so I think it's all anti-vaccine campaigns and things that are out there that they're getting all this mis misinformation. They really need to talk to their pediatrician, their family doctor, the health department, the CDC, because um, a lot of these parents just are adamant that they're not going to put these chemicals into their child's system because they um, are worried that they cause complications. Like I said, autism. The physician that did that study it was like 12. Um, he had 12 in his study, and he's lost his medical license since then. But you get movie stars like Jenny McCarthy and people like that that talk and say, you know, it causes autism, and then it just spreads through social media, and then yeah. parents believe this. And so I try to get them to talk to their physician, the health department, um, the Center for Disease Control, because it is super important. Vaccine is our, you know, thing that's going to save these kids. I, I, I hate to see, you know, the lifelong and complications. Absolutely. Lori, I've got, oh, I wish I had more time. You're so interesting to talk to, but I've got one quick question for you. Uh, when we were immunized as children, and of course it was after the fact for me because I am a polio survivor and the vaccine had not yet been perfected at that juncture, but um, what about vaccine life and longevity, whether it's measles or whatever it might be? Do elderly that have had the vaccines, do they have a wearing off, if you will, of the vaccine quality, and are they subject to the dangers of getting them again? Yeah, and that's the best thing to do is check with the health department and your family physician because, um, you know, there's the vaccine for pertussis or whooping cough, 
and grandparents can give that to infants. And so you do need to get boosters and check and see what shots you've had as an adult. And so the best thing to do is check um, with your family physician, health department, and see what boosters and stuff. We were just talking about that at our administrators meeting um, with the principals at Casha County this morning. And so um, as adults, you know, it's important. Of course, we all know that you need to get a tetanus shot every 10 years, but if you've been in an accident or stepped on a nail or that sort of thing, they'll give it to you a little sooner sometimes. So you do need to sometimes get boosters, and it just depends on the vaccine and, and the illness. And, of course, you know, you have chickenpox, but then as an adult, um, you can get shingles, and that's the same kind of virus. And so there are vaccines for adults, and it's important that we get our adults uh, up to date, too, so that the kids don't get sick from grandparents or parents. Now, I want to tell you that I wish I had more time. you got to promise me to come back. Lori Stimson, uh, District Nurse of Cassia County, you are excellent. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and I appreciate your time. It's an important matter that we get all of our kids vaccinated. Absolutely. Thank you, Lori. And uh, that wonderful lady brought to you right here on this program this morning called Cache County School Days by A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley, a family store waiting right now to serve you at A Child's World. Holy cow, we've got another guest waiting on the phone, but I've got to tell you that uh, there's going to be another great big auction coming up this Saturday morning at uh, in Jerome area at 715 East, 170 North from the blinking light on Highway 93 going north two miles and then east on Red Bridge Road, five miles, the Bolick Auction, managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Tractors and combines, farm equipment, ATVs, irrigation items, all kinds of different farm items, and they made a note that this is a super nice and clean farm auction. Don't want to miss it. It's going to be Saturday morning at 10 a.m., the Bullock Auction over in Jerome area, managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. No sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, yep, they sell them all. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line, and with us on the phone is a gentleman that represents Barry equipment and rental and we say good morning to Corey chandler how are you sir i'm doing great how are you doing not bad Corey. speak real nice and loud into that telephone and tell us what your job is with barry equipment and rental i'm a sales specialist with barry equipment and rental and uh well right now i cover the twin falls sun valley area and also up up in the casual county area well, now, when you when you represent Barry Equipment and Rental, and you've got three locations, Burley, Twin Falls, and the Nampa location, holy smokes, I mean, how do you educate yourself on all the equipment and all the great buys and the leases? That must be a full-time job in itself. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot, and it's taken some time to get there. But, uh, yeah, a lot of research, a lot of running equipment, doing demos with customers, and and, uh, you know, I'm learning with the rest of them, but, but yeah, Barry Equipment definitely has some awesome equipment to offer and, and a lot of uh, uh, ways that we can help out. Let me ask you this. I would imagine springtime with all the mud and everything else, you've got those great big Doosan wheel loaders and excavators. I would imagine that that's something you want to tell the audience about this morning, their financing plans, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a... I, I think not a lot of people are are too uh, familiar with Doosan yet, but they build an outstanding loader. They're the fifth largest equipment company in the world, um, just a little bit newer here to North America. But right now, Doosan has some awesome deals going on through the month of April. Uh, we, With all of our wheel loaders and excavators, we have a three-year, 5,000-hour powertrain and hydraulics extended warranty that we're offering. Um, as well as up to $9,000 in rebates um, with our, in lieu of finance and, and additional rebates that we can put on them. Uh, there's also an offer that also comes with the three-year, 5,000-hour warranty and uh, low-rate financing, mm. 0% interest for up to 36 months, or 
even up to 72 months of low rate financing. Wow. Along with that rebate. You know, Corey, real quick, too, you have got all the Bobcats, all the sizes of the Bobcats, and you've got uh, a special financing program on those, too. Quickly tell us about that. Yeah, so right now, zero for 60 months on all Bobcat skid steers, uh, compact wheel loaders, and mini excavators. Okay, and for those that are worried that they don't know how to drive one and they need one, you've got a sandbox out behind the business. You'll teach them, right? We sure do. So out at our Burley location, we got a big pit that we can go out there and run any piece of equipment that you see on our lot. More than happy to take you out there. Another option, um, I'm more than happy to come out to your location wherever you're at, bring a machine out and and do a demo with you out there and even leave it with you for a day or two and let you use it yourself at no charge. I'll tell you what, these are really, really good people. Corey, tell us the three locations and the times that you're open. So we are open from... We got the Burley location that's located at 159 US 30. Uh, phone number is 678 236 or 7368. And we are open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we got our location in Twin Falls at 465 Addison Avenue West. Phone number is 732 7368. We open at 730 and close at 530. And we also have a location in Nampa, mm-hmm. 2324 Caldwell Boulevard, uh, open from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. You know, you're a good guy, and you did a good job first time on the radio, and you got to come back and do it again. We're talking to Corey Chandler, sales specialist with Barry Equipment and Rental. Hey, man, thanks. You really, you tell the boss you deserve a raise. You did really well. <laughs> well, I certainly will. All right, sir. God <laughs> bless you. Very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much, Corey Chandler. Good, good job on behalf of Barry Equipment and Rental. I got to get this in. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Bingo. <laughs> they sent me an alert. Alert. Time change for bingo games every Friday night at the Minidoka County Senior Center starting on April 26th. The doors will open at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Ticket sales starting at 5. Early bird and bonanza games at 6 p.m. Regular games at 6.15. Bingo! Don't you miss it. Minidoka County Senior Center. Right now we're going to send it back over to Wheels. We'll be back in about three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Uh, Thank you. We cruise into the last half hour of our program this morning. And I want to remind you that the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce is going to have that big women's expo on April 24th at the Burley Best Western Inn and Convention Center starting at 9 in the morning and going till 4 or 5 in the afternoon. Hidden gems, explore, engage, and empower. Gals, I'll tell you what, you better get down there to the Chamber of Commerce. Get your tickets now. They're only $20, which includes lunch. And for this great big women's expo, don't forget the sponsors are Idaho Central Credit Union, Intermountain Cash Regional Hospital, Wright Physical Therapy, and Tailored Living. Coming up on April 24th. We're going to go to the phone line right now, and this is such a horrendous story, and I can't wait to talk to the author of the book called Kill the Boar, Government Complicity in South Africa's Brutal Farm Murders. And I'm going to introduce to you now, and I'm going to say the man's name, and I hope he'll correct me, but we say good morning to Ernst Reutz. Are you there, sir? Thank you very much. It's Ernst Reutz. But you, you got your class enough. Thank you. It's great to see you. Well, I will pronounce it roots, and I thank you for the correction. Ernst, uh, tell me this. This book and this story about basically white genocide going on in South Africa, my gosh, does the whole world really understand how dangerous and how deadly this is? Well, it is a very serious problem. And, and in the book, I deal, among others, with the question of genocide. And what I say there is it, 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 it's not genocide in the sense that, that what we've seen in 
for example, Rwanda and, and Nazi Germany with people thrown in concentration camps and, and people running down the streets with machetes and just hacking everyone to death. But we, the, what we see in South Africa is a, uh, you know, the metaphor of the frog in the boiling water. You put the frog in the cold water and you heat the pan slowly and it becomes warmer uh, by a few degrees every few minutes and the frog doesn't even realize it until eventually it's boiled to death. So what we've seen now is since the year 1990, uh, there's been about 2,000, probably more, I'm using the conservative numbers, there's been about 2,000 farm murders in South Africa. And it's actually within a very small community. So it's a small community of farmers. 2,000 have been murdered within that community. And it's not simply people coming into the house and shooting them and walking out. We're talking about the most inhumane and grotesque torture that you can imagine. I'm talking about people being tied up behind pickup trucks and dragged over dirt roads. Uh, children being thrown into boiling water. Um, an elderly lady tied to a chair and then they take an electric drill and they drill a hand, hold through her, through her hands and her feet. An elderly man being tied up and then uh, tortured with a blowtorch. Uh, I can go on. The, the ways in which these people are being tortured, people being, being forced to witness how their wives are being raped, um, things like that. And it, and it happens around us. I'm in PC at the moment, but where I live in South Africa, it's, it's happening around me. Uh, Ernst, let me ask you, why? I mean, that's such a uh, naive question, but why is this happening? And for God's sake, why is it not being stopped? Well, the, the, the answer to the question as to why it's happening probably is complicated. I think there's a, a, a variety of variables. If you ask the South African government, they would probably say it's well. They would say it's not happening. That's what our state president said. He came to the U.S. after President Trump tweeted about this. Our president came and he said, it's all a lie, there's no farmers being murdered in South Africa. But sometimes they would acknowledge that it's happening, and then they would say, no, it's because of inequality, or it's because of white privilege, or things like that. But I think the real reason is more complicated, and one of the main reasons that we are very concerned about, and that I write about in the book, is this political climate that is being created, where there's a, there's a hierarchy of recognition, um, in the sense that there's a double standard, that if some certain people get attacked and killed, it's associate but if other people get attacked and killed based on their identity it's not that bad or it's not something that you know that we should complain about that's that's the narrative in south africa so we have violence being romanticized by political leaders they would have political speeches or rallies and then they would talk about for example how how the white farmers should be blamed for everything that is wrong with this country and how evil they are despite the fact that they provide food for the country and then they would burst into song and they would sing songs like Kill the, uh, kill the farmer, or they would sing. It's, it's not so much a song, it's actually a chant. Uh, they would chant, one settler, one bullet. Or there's a Zulu song called Dubula Ibunu, which if you translate it, it means shoot the Boers. Now the Boers, in this context, referring to farmers. So there's, there's active, people in the U.S. talk about hate speech, but you, you should come to South Africa to really see what hate speech is. You know, Ernst, I'm sitting here, and quite frankly, I'm appalled, and I'm scared as to this kind of concept and thinking uh, enlarging itself, enlarging itself like a cancerous growth, and going into other parts of the world. Who or what group is the most responsible for these heinous killing crimes? Well, I looked into all the evidence that I could find in, in the writing of the book, and the problem is in the vast majority of cases, we don't know. The attackers aren't caught, or if they are caught, they don't really say a lot. Some of them have said that they were told by the ruling party that they should do this, or that they were influenced by the singing of these songs that I mentioned. Others have said that they just, they're just hungry, or they just wanted to steal something, and then they basically they accidentally tortured the, the farmer to death while just going in to steal some food. So we get all these conflicting messages, but there's an overarching problem here, and that is that in South Africa there's a minority of people whom we represent. I'm, I'm with an organization called Afri Forum, um, who regard themselves as Westerners. Um, I, I am a South African, but I, I associate with the U.S. and with Europe, although I'm not a U.S. or a, uh, an American or a European, but I regard myself as a Westerner. And these people are actively vilified by, by the South African government. So there's a very, very strong anti-Western sentiment. And there's a very strong notion of solidarity with countries like Venezuela and Zimbabwe and China and, and so forth. So it's just, you know, the West, West against the rest type of, um, type of uh, 
battle playing out in South Africa, but on a smaller scale. Ernst, I'm sitting here and I'm I'm equating what you've written about and what you know is going on in South Africa, and I'm listening to a lot of our possible Democratic nominees, whether it's Kamala Harris, whether it's Cory Booker, or whomever it might be, that denigrate and damn white people in our society and call us white privilege, etc. Is the same concept or mental concept starting here in this country to hate the white race? We, well, we are quite concerned standing in, um, in South Africa if we look at what's happening in the U.S. and we see people flirting with the same type of socialist ideas. So there's this push now by the South African government. To, sorry, there's a fire truck off. So there's a push now by the South African government to expropriate or confiscate, basically, private property without compensation. And we are experiencing the consequences of socialism. And... All the empirical evidence is there that socialism doesn't work. Uh, it's tried over and over again. We, we, there's so many countries in which it has been tried, and there's no success story. Not even the Scandinavian countries, these countries, is often falsely held up as a success story of socialism. But it's strange and, it, and it's alarming to us in South Africa to look at the U.S. and to see people claiming or thinking that this is a good idea, this is something that should be experimented with in a country like the United States. And that they wouldn't succeed with, with their ideas. You know, Ernst, I don't know what is being done. I don't know what's happening to curb and or arrest or, yes, even kill these absolute deadly groups that are going around and performing these heinous tasks. But what about politics? What about the Trump administration? What about foreign aid money? What about putting the lid on this thing and demanding that the whites be protected? What's going on? Yes. Uh, that's why I'm speaking to you from Washington currently, because we, we are here to, to speak to as many people as we can. And we believe there's a few things that the U.S. could do. The, the political system that we have in South Africa and the ruling party that we have was, was, was very much pushed by the U.S. administration in 1992 up until 1994, um, who pushed for this government. Now we have it, and now we're sitting with the consequences. So we're hoping that some in the U.S. would at least regard it as a a moral obligation at least to speak out about what's happening in South Africa. But other than that, there are some practical things that I think people can do. The first thing is, if we can get more people to talk about it, it would already help. Because our government and our ruling party is very sensitive to national criticism because we have been getting with free pass because of the fact that they were the party of Nelson Mandela. But um, then there's something more practical, which is, there's a, an, a treaty between the South African government and the U.S. called the AGOA Agreement. And according to that agreement, the parties to that agreement have to respect property rights. So the U.S. could step out of that agreement, although we're not hoping that would happen because it would have negative consequences for the country. But what the U.S. could do is to, to, to bring it under the attention of the South African government to say to them, well, if you, if you continue with this path, then you will be in violation of this agreement, and then we would we should consider, or we could consider, stepping out. As I said, our government is very, very sensitive to international scrutiny, and I, we've seen them um, backpedal if, if, if they are criticized or if what they are doing gets international attention. So I'm hoping we can achieve. You know, Ernst, I'm sitting here in my home at my studio, and we're broadcasting all over the world, literally, on our Internet services, and I just absolutely can't comprehend how... Caucasians, white people that are property owners and farmers in another country, South Africa, could be subjected to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, fear for their lives just for being white. I mean, this is atrocious. Mm. Yes, it is. And, and the, the way in which it is um, described or framed by the South African government, that's for example, so we, the, we're a minority community in South Africa. So our former state president said in Parliament, his words were, we are the majority. Uh, no, he said, you are a minority. You have less rights because you are a minority. This is how democracy works. So, so they, they actively claim, and it's not only him, there's been many other leaders in the ruling party making claims to that effect, that, that the minority community in South Africa shouldn't have the same rights as the, as the majority. Um, 
and it's very alarming the way the way this is being is being approached. So we had, for example, our deputy deputy president in South Africa last year making a public speech and basically threatening with a violent takeover. He said in his speech that if white people or white farmers in particular don't voluntarily hand over their property, in other words, vacate their farm to just hand over the to the house, if they don't voluntarily do that. There, there would be a violent takeover. Now imagine a claim like that coming from the deputy president of a country. Um, it, it's very, very alarming what's happening. Let me ask you, do these farms, do these farmers, their families, their workers, uh, are they able to arm themselves? Are they able to hire outside protection? Are there people that will help protect their property and their lives? Or what's going on here? Yes. Yes, we do. You, you can arm yourself in South Africa. And we, as a civil rights organization, we've been very involved with that. So we have established more than 130 what we call local community safety structures in South Africa, in which people drive patrols within the framework of the law. They drive patrols, they have radio contact. It's like a neighborhood watch. Um, and we've seen where people do that, where people arm themselves and they they are more vigilant and they look after their own safety better, that crime in those areas decline. Um, we have a situation in South Africa where obviously taxpayers are funding the police service. We have 193,000 police officers in South Africa. But the, the amount of private security guards in South Africa that we have is more than double that of, of the South African police service. We have more private security guards in South Africa than the police and the military combined. So if I get attacked in my house, I would, not, I would not call the police. I would call private security. That, that's just what people do. It's, it's like a state within a state. People, have, people are privatizing to such an extent that they're not using, although we are still paying taxes and we are taxed quite heavily, um, we're privatizing everything because that's how we, that's how we do our start -up. Ernst, I've only got a moment or so left, but this book called Kill the Boar and its government complicity in South Africa's brutal farm murders, where, where can people find the book? This seems like a necessity to read. Yes, I think there are important lessons from the book with regard to the U.S. that people should take note of. Um, so the book is on Amazon. It's, it's recently achieved uh, international bestseller status on Amazon, for which we are very grateful. And I believe there's a promotion currently for the, the online version of the book. So if people go on Amazon and they, and they just search for Kill the Boer, Boer is B-O-E-R, uh, Kill the Boer, they, they will find it. You know, Ernst, I've got to ask you this. Uh, are there appeals to the Trump administration for more help? Uh, basically kind of a big brother attitude of we're going to be there to protect you. What is the attitude from this administration? Well, what we've seen is the president tweeting about this, saying that the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo should look into this. We do know that, that a report was drafted that is filed to the Secretary of State. We are concerned that the report um, relies on information that has already been disproven um, that sort of downplays the extent of the problem. But that's why we are in Washington. So we're here to speak to as many people as we can, including the administration, to inform them... Um, just how bad the situation is and what could be done about it. And I think your listeners can help just by talking about it. The more we, the more people talk about it publicly, the more people make public statements, and especially speak to their representatives or speak on social media, um, the more focus they will be on the problem. And I believe the more the, the U.S. will be inclined to, to take in that big brother role that you are talking about. Absolutely. Ernst Roots, and I want to wish you God's blessings and safety, my friend, and uh, I hope this book is read by everyone. Kill the Boar, Government Complicity in South Africa's Brutal Farm Murders. Sir, I wish you the best, and please, please, I'm going to get a copy of the book, and I'll have you back on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless. Yes. Thank you. It is 2019. And the world is still in chaos, worse perhaps than ever before. Killing people, killing farmers because they are white over in South Africa. I mean, I just, when I heard this story,
about how bad this situation is. I heard it uh, when I started paying attention to this in South Africa, I think last fall before Thanksgiving, about the absolutely heinous and dastardly attacks that were being made on farm families killed in their home because of nothing more than their white. And they're killing them in South Africa, and nobody really seems to care. Uh, I want to thank that gentleman, Ernest Roots, uh, for coming on my program. We originally had it set up so that we would call him over in South Africa. And he alerted us and said, no, I'm coming to the United States. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C., making an appeal to the Trump administration and others. And you can call me here. And he said it would be safer for you to get a hold of me here in the United States. Wow. Oh, you think you got problems? And then we hear stories like that. My goodness. Let's go to the weather real quick, and we want to say our thanks to Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the entire crew at 331 North Road, Jerome. The telephone number to call, 324-7657. Or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Delicious, absolutely fantastic meats from Scarrow's Meats. And look at the wide array of what they have to offer to serve you and your family. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Maybe a little bit of rain for today and slightly breezy. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Mostly cloudy skies is what we're looking at. We do have a slight chance of rain showers this afternoon and expecting a high of 52 winds out of the west at about 16 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, expecting a low of 34. Tomorrow, a slight chance of rain and or snow showers in the morning. That's going to give way to rain by the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies, still breezy. Expecting a high of 52 by Friday night. Partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Hopefully for Saturday we're going to see a little bit of sunshine with a high of 57. By Sunday, mostly cloudy skies. Chance of rain showers and a high of 56. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebit. Uh, Gina, thank you very much. Scarrow's Meats, Don Scarrow and the crew at 331 North Road, Jerome. Mm-mm, delicious. 324-7657. And using that word delicious, they are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. You know, I try, along with my lovely wife, to make sure that we get a lot of various and different segments of information, politics, etc. on this program every day. This last one really, really bothered me to think that human beings are being subjected to killing groups and masses of uh, machete-wielding, gun-wielding people just come onto the farm and kill them because of their color of the skin. And in this day and age, when you think that we've left so much of a, we the world have left a kind of a heinous and very dangerous and deadly past and moving more towards civilization, (laughs) that certainly is disproved when you talk about the heinous killings in South Africa. I just was blown away when I read the excerpts of that book by Ernst Roots. It's, It's just unbelievable. I've got time for a call or two. Give me a jingle, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, by the way, uh, my friends and many of my relatives back in the Midwest, yeah, they are freezing (laughs) right now. Uh, Some of my old college buddies back in South Dakota and Minnesota, and Wisconsin, and some of my relatives, right now they are looking at 20 inches of new snow and really cold temperatures, severe blowing winds up to 80 miles an hour in some places. We had 35 yesterday and we complained. And yet the global warming alarmists and theorists are out there saying that we don't know what we're talking about. Uh Uh-huh. Really. 
Calls are welcome. 436-224-1866-927-4587. While I'm waiting for your call, I'm going to remind you again about our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations with a great big spring tire sale. You can save money and drive carefully and safely. Absolutely on the best of tires, different tread designs, all the sizes for your car, pickup, SUV. I urge you, urge you to stop in and check out all the buys today, like the Eclipse tire for your car, 70,000 mile warranty, superior ride quality, or perhaps the Open Country AT for your pickups and SUVs. Stop in, check it out, and don't forget the best in brake service and front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this at all seven locations. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Uh, let me see what else have I got. Lunch Bunch, next Thursday, the 18th. Don't miss it. Bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a relative. Uh, we're going to have a lot of door prizes. Walmart, Smith's Foods, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin, Denny's. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all your support. We urge you to be there next Thursday at 1130, Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. We got a heck of a program. Heck of a program lined up for next Monday, which is also tax day. A lot of great guests. Good morning, caller. I've got about a minute left. Go ahead, please. Hey, I'm going to put up a $10 gift certificate for the person that brings the most guests to Lunch Bunch next week. There you, Doug, doggone it, you are a home run hitter. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. And uh, sponsored by Doug's Alternator and Starter Repair over there in Hayburn, right? Yes, sir. I got you covered. Listen, that was really nice. I'll talk to the boss. I think I can get it okay. But, you know, <laughs> he's not in right now. Get it initialed, would you please? <laughs> Will do. See you later, buddy. That was really nice. There you go. More incentive to attend Lunch Bunch next Thursday. Thank you, Doug. We appreciate it. We're going to wrap it up for this week and uh, say thank you very much to everybody for being a part of the program. Thanks to Wheels, our engineer. And we always end the show by saying the way things were are the way things ought to be. And the world needs more cowboys. We'll see you Monday at 8.06. Zeb at the ranch, you please have a good weekend and be careful out there. Wheels, behave yourself. Talk to you Monday at 8.06.